Hey people, this will be a five-part series where we'll be covering modeling, texturing, geometry nodes, lighting, and compositing to make this floating island render. We'll also be working in EV to make this accessible to more people. Let's get started. Throughout the videos, you'll be able to see what keys I'm pressing here. First, we want to go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for ANT Landscape and enable it. Then exit out of Preferences. Now, press A to select all and press X to delete. In the top right of the viewport, click this down arrow and enable cavity. Next, press Shift A for the Add menu. Go to Mesh and select Landscape. To zoom in on your selected object, press period on the number pad or rebind it in the key map settings here. Without clicking anything else, open the Properties panel in the bottom left. Once open, set the noise type to Planet Noise and the noise basis to New Perlin. Next, set the height to minus 1 and the minimum to minus 1.5. You can now change the random seed until you find one you like. This will be the bottom half of your floating island. Once done, close the Properties panel and press 1 on the number pad to switch to Front View. If you don't have a number pad, you can rebind it in the key map settings here. Now press Shift A, go to Mesh, and add a cube. Then press S to scale and Z to lock the scale to the Z axis. Scale it until it covers the top portion of the island. Now select the island, go to the Modifiers tab, search for the Boolean modifier, and set the target as the cube you created. Whilst hovering over the modifier, press Ctrl A as the shortcut to apply it. Now you can select the cube and delete it. Next, select the island, Press Tab to switch to Edit Mode, and with it all selected, press G to grab and Z to lock the movement to the Z axis. Now move it up and align the top of the model with a horizontal X axis line. You may need to zoom in to get it just right. Switch back to Object Mode, press Shift D to duplicate, left click to confirm, S to scale, Z to lock the axis, and scale it until it flips to a position you're happy with. This will be the top half of your floating island. Now select both, press Ctrl A and apply the scale. Then press Ctrl J to join them into one object. After joining them together, press this down arrow next to the overlays icon and enable statistics. This will allow you to keep track of how many polygons are in your scene as well as per object. After doing this, go to the Modifiers tab and search for the Remesh modifier. Keep it set to voxel and set the voxel size to 0.025. The lower the voxel size, the more polygons your object will have. Try to have a similar number of polygons to what your original mesh had. After putting in your numbers, tick Shade Smooth and apply the modifier. Next, we want to smooth out where the top and bottom of our island bridge together. To do so, click this drop-down arrow in the top left and select Sculpt Mode. You can use F to change the scale of the brush, then hold down Shift and left click to smooth out where the two parts bridge together. When done, switch back to object mode. Now we want to add a tree model to our island. To do so, head to the Poly Haven website. Click the Assets button and in the search bar, type Trees. They have a few different options to choose from and all of which are completely free. Once you've chosen the one you like, you can set the quality at which you'd like the models and make sure the export is set to Blend File and hit Download. You will also want to download the Jacaranda tree if you haven't already. This will make sense in a moment. After downloading both, be sure to extract the files. To import our tree with the right setup, go to File and click Append. From here, locate where you saved the files to and click on the Blend File. From here, Click Collections, select all three collections, and hit Append. This will bring the tree into Blender with the correct geometry setups. Now, you'll want to select the little branches that came with it, which act as the instance objects, and in the Outliner, press the eye and camera icon of their collection groups to disable them from the render and viewport. Next, you'll want to scale and adjust the tree model to suit your island. In the Modifier tab, you can change some of the tree's settings, but we'll worry more about that later. Once you're done with that, we want to import the Jacaranda tree. It's the same process as before. Go to File, Append, Locate the Blend file, and this time, we only want the Mesh. So select the Mesh folder and choose the Tree file. We'll be using this as the roots of our island. Before adjusting it, press 7 on the number pad to go to the top view. 
Switch to Edit Mode and press Alt-Z to turn X-Ray Mode on. Now we want to box select about half of the mesh. Press X and delete the vertices. Following this in the Modifier tab, add a Decimate modifier, keep it set to Collapse, and set the ratio to 0.3. Then apply the modifier. This is all in the name of reducing the poly count as we won't need that many. From here, you can scale and rotate the branches and place them at the underside of the island to appear as roots. If you would like more of the roots, you can duplicate the same one using Alt-D. This will create a linked duplicate and won't increase the poly count. To take this one step further, select the branches and go into Edit Mode, press L to select a linked area of branches, press Shift-D to duplicate, then press P and separate by selection. Select the separate branches, switch to Edit Mode, select the top vertices, press Shift-S, and choose Cursor to selected. Then back in Object Mode, right-click, go to Set Origin, and set it to the 3D Cursor. This will now make the pivot point where the 3D Cursor was. Now place these branches so they appear to hang off the edges of the island, and duplicate them around a few times with Shift-D. Be sure to vary the scale and rotation slightly each time. To add some life to our floating island, we're going to add some animal models to it. And as this isn't a sculpting-focused tutorial, we're going to be generating our animal models using AI. Head over to the HyperHuman website and register an account. You'll get a few free tokens upon registering, so this part is completely free. Select the bounding box option, press handcraft your own, and adjust the dimensions to roughly the scale of your animal. This can be adjusted when we're inside Blender. Once you're happy with the dimensions, click Confirm. Next, click the Text Input box and input what animal you'd like to generate alongside any other details you'd like to include. Then hit the Tick button. It'll now generate an image and your model will be based off of it. You can regenerate the image until you find one you're happy with, then hit the Tick again. Once done, hit Generate. It will now create a 3D preview of your model. If you would like to rig the animal, come to the Advanced Settings, select Reset, select Rest, and click Redo to generate an A or T pose of your model. Other than that, select the poly count, I recommend 5000 as it will be far from the camera, and hit Confirm. Once that's done, it will generate the geometry for your model. If there's anything you'd like to change, you can come to the Mesh Editor and make any of the adjustments you need. We can now use the same image to create a material for our model and click Generate. Once the material has loaded, click Confirm. Finally, for the export settings, keep Base Model ticked. Set it to FBX, PBR Material, 1K Textures, and hit Download. After downloading, be sure to unzip the file. Head back into Blender, press F4, go to Import, and select FBX. Now locate the Animal FBX file you downloaded and import it to Blender. From here, simply scale the model relative to your island and place it where you think looks good. You can repeat this process as many times as you'd like for different animals across the scene. For our final step of the modeling process, we're going to add in some rocks. To do this, press F4 and go to Preferences. In the Add-ons tab, search for the Extra Mesh Objects add-on and enable it. Once enabled, press Shift-A, go to Mesh, and select the Rock Generator. Before making any changes or clicking off, open the Properties panel in the bottom left. At the bottom of the panel, set the preset to Asteroid. At the moment, the poly count for the rock is far too high. To fix that, set the detail and the display level to 2. If you don't like the look of the rock, you can untick Use Random Seed and play with a few different ones to see what you like. Once you've got your perfect rock, scale it down to match your island and create a few linked duplicates using Alt-D and place them around the underside of the island. Be sure to vary the scale and rotation slightly as you're going. That's all for this part. You'll be able to watch the remaining four parts at my school community. I'll be releasing one to two of these similar courses every month, making them as clear and easy to understand as possible. You'll also gain direct access to me to assist you with your projects, as well as a number of other things such as live events, art contests, feedback on your work, and most importantly, being part of a great community with a common interest of leveling up their Blender skills. Link will be in the description. I'll see you guys inside.